Kobe is on a different level. That guy is just like, hey, big man. <laughs> yeah, bro. What's up, <laughs> bro? Bro, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So before I go back to Japan, like I really want to learn the video, but I don't know where to start. And your video is helping me out when it comes to Premiere Pro and a little bit of. In as much as I, I don't really understand, <laughs> I know, I know, I will definitely get there. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. It's <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have Kobe Short. We have Kobe Short here in the building. And um, Kobe Short, let's get straight to it. I don't want to waste much of your time. Can you please introduce, give us an overview of um, who you are? Okay. Thank you once more for having me. Don't let's go. Um, I'm Kobe, or you can refer to me as Kobe Short. Yes, that's what I go by as my brand name. Um, I'm a Duba Forward J. Ajimai. Legally, that's my legal name. Edubo Four, Edubo Four, Edubo Four. What's the meaning of Edubo Four? What's the meaning of Edubo Four? Um, in Ashanti, uh, from what I know, it means authentic or something like that. Someone who stole. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, that's my legal name, Edubo Four, Judge Mike. And mm. uh, I schooled all my life in university. Actually, okay. from my upbringing, my parents are both teachers. My dad's an electronic university and my mom is also a head teacher. So, um, all my life I've been with books. You know what I mean? It's all been right. stand on me and all that every time. That's every why now and the book is coming like that. It's coming oh. like that. <laughs> so, so that, that's how my upbringing has been. And ever since, oh. I've always loved to you know, um, take after my dad or my mom mm. by helping others because I see the good that they do. Um, that's good. That's good. You know, Schooling in KNUSD from the onset gave me that kind of fluidity in terms of consistency. Mm. When mm. the people mm. I met, the people I moved with, I moved all mm. my life along with them throughout the years I was oh. in school. So um, when I got into the university in KNUSD, that's why I got um, myself introduced to a, a bigger picture of what I really wanted to do. Initially, oh, okay. from okay. all my life, I felt that it was going to be right to take after my dad for real. I be a lecturer. Like <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but I mean, things changed after my interest also. I mean, diverted towards different angles. But so, I mean, I think you're still basically in the field, looking at your YouTube and then knowledge and practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, yeah. by the still different in the same line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. Well, be, any before anything um, relating to photography, what what's your hobby? What do you like doing best? Okay, I love watching movies first of all. Oh. And um, even though I'm not the type that normally goes out on sightseeing or whatever, oh. but I love to be among okay. my friends. I mean, I used to watch a lot of football, but not anymore now, but I love to hang out <laughs> with a lot of friends. Okay, okay, <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. So maybe always, I mean, watching films and all that. Yeah, yeah so um, I remember when I started photography at Pixel Ridge Place, I saw a picture of, um, is it Miss Winnie? Is it that's a name, right? Miss Winnie. Yeah, Miss Winnie. And I was Winifred. like, yo, who, sh who shot this picture? And I had to find the photographer. I went through the photographer's page and it was Kobe Short. I was like, who is this guy? This guy is just... <laughs> Which picture was that? <laughs> oh, it was some outdoor picture with a leg, like some nice pose view. It was some outdoor picture. Okay. Okay. I'll, I mean, I've, I've had a couple of shoots there. A lot yes, of them. Yes, 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 I yes, can't yes, actually yes. even count. There are a lot of that. I've lost count of the numbers. Like two years no. back, two years back, yes. Two years. Yeah. Okay. I see. <laughs> and I, then see. I was like, yo, this guy is just talented. All of a sudden, I saw you mm -hmm. with Strongman, directing movies and all. So can you tell us how this photography journey started? <laughs> okay, my story about <laughs> photography is quite funny. Um, I've made a video on my YouTube channel that outlines how I got to become a photographer. But don't, so don't every time I watch here. a video, Please, don't say all here. You are, I'm, you are supposed to go watch. <laughs> go watch ground. Well, okay, okay. One thing that I always regret not adding on to the video that I created on my YouTube channel is what I'm going to yeah. tell you about, so that you can I awesome. mean, go ahead and watch the rest over there. Awesome. Yes. Let's go. So uh, in school. Um, naturally, I would say that photography was part of my courses, and so um, I had no choice than to learn it for ac academic purposes. But yeah. it wasn't until um, when I realized that some people were not actually doing filmmaking or photography for 
that matter, were actually doing so well. Initially, I thought it was just, you know, take your camera, point and shoot at anything. I didn't know about the technicalities, um, mm -hmm. focus in, subject, isolation. I had no idea about all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when I started getting interested in photography, that was in 2015. I was in my room, I remember, when I saw a picture or a series of pictures that I went ahead to check out that Instagram handle. And that was actually Clay Kofi. So I took his okay. pictures out, looked up at his profile, and I noticed that there was something peculiar about his pictures. They were so different from the normal everyday pictures you, you will see, all right? And it had to do about retouching. Even in 2015, I had no idea about what retouching was. I'll just take the picture, <laughs> color correcting, and I'll just post it. And Remove. It. <laughs> so when I saw that his pictures were very unique, very distinct from what I normally see on a normal day, um, I decided to research more into it. So my roommates told me at that time that, oh, you don't know Clay Kofi. He's actually a well-known photographer on campus. Then he was also in, in school in Ken West. Yeah. So I looked him up and I even went, went ahead to, you know, contact him. And um, he made me aware that he had no ties with um, communication design, which is what I was reading in school by then. And he did painting and sculpture. So it brought me to the realization that if someone doing painting and sculpture, which has no relationship whatsoever with a course that I'm actually reading for real, something that mm -hmm. I'm introduced by default, mm -hmm. and this person is doing so well, how much more myself reading the, the, the course I yeah, mean, yeah, as, yeah. as a student, I feel, you understand? I feel, I feel, I feel. So it pushed me to um, learn so much more, and uh, I decided to hit him up and see if I will be fortunate enough to have myself on set with him. I mean, to see a friend or two. Okay. But because of his busy schedules and all of that, in fact, I was very new to it. So I thought that he was just trying to push me away in one way or the other. You know? oh. When you don't know someone, you wouldn't be yes, able to, yes, yes, exactly. you know, from the onset, touch the person just like that and even have ties with the person. So I thought it was one of those things. But he went ahead to hand me over to Specs Photo. That's uh, Ben. Yes. Ben also was in my class, ben. actually. Um, okay. As well as Gorg. Um, he's been friends with Gorg since I know. And Specs was more than human to assist me through everything. Mm. Then too, I didn't know anything about how to download any videos from YouTube to learn. So <laughs> <laughs> Specs gave me some videos to check out. And uh, when I went back to my room, I was watching them over and over again. Then I understood mm. that, okay, so photography is not something so simple, but how it's practiced over here in Ghana has affected the look of it and even how people generally see it. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, watching yeah. videos about models, how to even pose models, what to do, what not to do, how to prepare for um, a shoot and all mm -hmm. that. I mean, it, it gave me a lot of questions that I could ask. So I went ahead, mm -hmm. anytime I had the opportunity to go meet Spex, uh, that's Ben, um, I had a chance to, you know, ask him some questions and he was more than willing to assist me throughout. So he oh, wow. gave me one um, test that I didn't know it was actually a test. I've seen him construct a softbox, the Godox 95 centimeters, the one that you know you collapse and yeah, 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 you collapse and detach. Yes, that one. And uh, I think he was testing me. I didn't know, so I put it together, assembled it, and when he came and saw that I had actually done it after just being with him on set for once, he was he was more than amazed. So he gave me that compliment that wow, I just came here and you know you could do this all by yourself. That's good. Mm. So. It told me that, okay, if someone I deem to be my tutor sees mm -hmm. that whatever it is, uh, effort I'm putting in is promising, that means that I'm on the right path. You get what wow. I mean? Wow, yes. So that, that's how it started for me. And I was, you know, consistently joining him on shoots, assisting him. I even have the very first video over there, down there on my YouTube channel as a shoot that he edited, Specs edited. It was Gold. Oh, for real? Odyssey. It's actually there. And you see me, I'm way, way, way different. You might not even remember. <laughs> yes, I yes, was wearing yes. glasses then, and uh, I was very, very slender. Holding <laughs> the, the softbox and uh, lighting up this um, Islamic concept, you know, it was an experience. Mm, and mm, Charlie, mm. I mean, through and through, I've loved photography since. That's actually how I started out. Oh, that's awesome, man. You go and watch the rest on YouTube. Definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, I noticed, I noticed, um, I think it was one of the strongman's video. I was just watching the video and I saw directed by Kobe Shots. I was like, huh? So I had to pause and then read it again, like, Kobe Shots, Kobe Shots. 
Why did you move <laughs> to video? <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I okay. don't really keep up on social media. My bad. I'm so sorry. It's more, uh, on a lot of people, I don't really check. So I didn't know when you actually, like, when you actually mastered video to the extent that you were even doing shorts, films, and then you were making music videos. I was like, I was so surprised. I was like, yo, why, why, did, you, why did you switch? Why video? Okay. I was still attributed to my school days, okay? Filmmaking okay. was introduced to us in third year university. Mm-hmm. So I think it has been like I was supposed to learn it. I'm, I mean, I've always been meant to learn it. Mm-hmm. And um, photography as it is, um, I understood that everything that you would operate on your camera to take a picture, most often than not, most of them applies to video as well. So when I learned okay. video, um, the introduction to video production and learn how to shoot documentaries, how to frame, learn about frame rates and all of that. I realized that this was another world that I could just enter. So <laughs> I was still doing uh, photography, but yes. I wanted to learn filmmaking and to to have two things that I could do and alternate. Because, you know, mm-hmm. if you are able to cover more grounds by knowing not more than, not, not just one thing, but other disciplines, it gives you, um, you know, a, a much more broader understanding and you can understand cover more about the creative yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. So yeah. that, that, that's exactly how I got that interest. So I read about it and I was just also applying the same thing that I would to um, photography, Um, watching YouTube videos, learning Mm. new stuff, even camera equipment that hadn't been introduced to um, the market over here in Ghana. I was much more abreast with everything until it even Mm. arrived. So it's like all my life, I I loved doing what I was doing when I first held my camera, you understand? Mm. So filmmaking was the same thing as compared to photography in a lot of ways. You are a photographer, okay. so you understand yeah, what I mean. Yes, yes, because yes. Um, if my camera has the feature to shoot video, I can as well do something with it. I mean, exactly. most times, um, YouTube didn't just start for me like that. I started mm-hmm. YouTube by posting some behind the scenes of photography. Then when I got introduced to filmmaking, then I realized that, okay, so if I'm a filmmaker and I feel that I can also teach people what I know in filmmaking, I should as well look at the market that's doing so well, that's of course um, um, in the Western culture, US or Canada or whatever. These are YouTubers that I was really watching. And Mm -hmm. I got a clear understanding much more about filmmaking than it is, I mean, here in Ghana, I would say, with all confidence Mm -hmm. that people don't really regard it as much as how it is outside. Outside, if If you put together a set and you are filming, let's say, a music video, when you talk to the client, about how you want it to be, how you've envisioned it to become, they don't really understand you. It's like they have a clarity, right? But they just want to just get it over with and do it. But it it needs a lot more input, a lot more. And it always demands um, investment. And I think that's one of the turn-offs for them when it comes to they have to invest more (laughs) and all that. So it's like, if that's the case and they are not giving me that opportunity to actually unleash what I have in me, then mm-hmm. I could as well also put together it myself and create that opportunity for myself. Then it started by shooting videos, shooting B-roll sequences, shooting mm-hmm. uh, models, just taking some B-roll shots of models and slowing them down in sequences, putting them together. And, you know, that's how it, 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 it started. And I realized that people wow. were also loving it for it. Because I started with yes. photography, I was doing weddings, I was shooting um, portraiture, and people were following me because of that content. But when I switched... Um, video. to shooting video, I noticed that the patronage wasn't as much before, but as much, in yes, the same yes. line, I've actually grown my um, viewership and my followership also in that respect. So I do both simultaneously. I haven't actually switched totally. I do them simultaneously. Yeah. Wow. So are you planning to switch to filmmaking like full time? Like, Come again. Are you, are you looking at switching to filmmaking full time? Oh, no, no, no. You know, my, my, <laughs> my YouTube channel is about photography and filmmaking. I love both. I mean, people misconstrue that I've switched totally to filmmaking. And I don't know why makes them feel that way. No, why? Because, because I do a, You see, you, that's the reason why I still did my best to be posting uh, pictures of models. Mm. I mean, did my best to organize my own couple of shots. Um, I mean, sorry, shoots, as well as um, even... Uh, Join hands with photographers to still create content, to still be yes, in that yes. same line and not make people 
thing that I've stopped doing for uh, photography completely. That's that's actually feel, the reason why I was doing so. Much. I I feel like with the level you've reached, you more of your viewers are, are getting really into the filmmaking side because, bro, trust True. me, the impact True. you're having when it comes to products and by filmmaking is mad. The next cafe one I saw, I was like, bro, why? Thank why? you. Why? You understand? So I, I myself <laughs> feel like, bro, why are you even like? Are you still in the photography world? Because if I am, crah, the cock crowd is at You would have talked out. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, photography was my first love when it comes to media work. Okay? Yeah, I've always loved photography, and I don't think that in one way or the other I will stop. Because even when I'm shooting a video, I need to take some pictures of the scene. Mm. I mean, leave some documentation in my archives to always remind me of the past, what I did in the past. So there's no way I can say that I can leave photography behind. Because even coming down to my YouTube channel, I'm also teaching people who are also interested in um, photography. And I have wow. the dream to establish something that will deal with both at the same time. You understand? So if I'm wow. the know in both, if, you, if I'm in the know in both um, in ventures, it will do me good than just, I mean, focus on one. Please, do you right. take interns? I, I think I want to be your intern. Oh, Charlie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, we're well, talking about um, filmmaking and, 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 yeah, yeah, the interns. Well, well I mean, uh, when it comes to interns, I've, I've worked with a couple of people. When I used to shoot weddings, um, of course, you need hands on board. So I have yeah. people coming in. I, I work with a couple of people. And that's, that's how I learned how to, I mean, lead a team and see to it that everything was established and everything was executed in the right way. I mean, how to get people motivated, how to get my team on the level. You understand? I'm, I'm your new intern. Thank you for taking me. Oh, bro. <laughs> the, the work that you are doing, oh, trust me, trust me. You're also doing marvelous work. Trust me. I mean, <laughs> bro, bro, thanks so much. <laughs> you're just pulling my legs, I know. But we are still so... doing our best. Yeah, doing... yeah. Looking at the filmmaking, like the YouTubing and all this like magic stuff you're doing you now. Like how is the YouTube community treating you? When it comes to views, well, subscribers and all. <laughs> but we the small one I started, I cannot see top. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural. It's natural. YouTube is a whole different ball game, trust me. Um YouTube is a platform that deals with uh a plethora of genres, right? If mm -hmm. if I'm making sense. We have entertainment, we have education, we have news, we have a lot of things, right? And whatever venture or whatever um, um, commodity that it is that you are creating content on attracts its own uh, viewership, right? When I started YouTube, it wasn't easy, but I had already um, conditioned myself after watching a couple of videos that it's not going to be very easy from the onset, getting even your very first hundred subscribers wasn't going to be an easy thing to attain. So I was psyched. So if I post a video and I don't get the returns I was expecting, it didn't really bother me much. But it got to a point where you mm. would invest money in creating one content. Let's say you are doing a photo shoot and you want the world to see your behind the scenes and how your craftsmanship is and how you put together the video. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can spend hours editing one video and you upload it on YouTube. That's why it dawned on me that it's not easy. I mean, the people who were complaining to me before that um, posting video, I'm sorry, YouTube is not a very easy platform to be on. I think I was now getting them because yeah. they <laughs> as much invested a lot of time, effort, money into their videos that they were creating. But in mm -hmm. return, it wasn't getting, I mean, I mean it wasn't coinciding with each other. Mm, mm. So I know it brought me to the realization that, okay, fine. If I need to create as much content and um, creating much more content is going to give me more chances of getting people to always be watching my video in one way mm. or the other. Even if mm. I get two views on one video and I create 20 of them in one month, definitely as the videos get uploaded, it will be introduced to people. It will be introduced mm. to much more than YouTube's algorithm is in a way that when you, you are a consistent uploader or you are a consistent creator, the mm. algorithm tends to favor you in one way or the other. Okay. It notices that you are consistent. And YouTube is also a platform where if you don't upload 
for a matter of six months, you get suspended. It's like oh. it, they they assume that it's either you are dead it's or a dead, your yeah. account is not yes vibrant anymore. It's 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 a, oh. it needs to be suspended. So, I mean, in the long run, no one is going to use it. So if you are consistent, the algorithm notices that oh, this particular channel always keeps up with the videos that they create. And it pushes okay. it more to people. So I've actually seen it. When it started, it wasn't easy. People were not viewing okay. my content, trust me. But now, as I devoted more time and I actually mm. sacrificed a lot of things, I think I, have, I even have a video on how I was able to consistently post on a regular. Yeah, I, 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 I put aside two days wedding, ago, yeah. Yes, I put aside wedding photography, which, which was really taking most of my time. And mm. I wasn't actually enjoying it as much. So honestly, I needed to find a way to devote all my time and to actually treat YouTube as a job. Mm -hmm. When I started doing that, I knew that that was actually it because it was reflecting. I was seeing wow. things were changing and it has been changing ever since. Now I get more viewership than before, Is it, even if it's not as much as probably the big dogs are all getting, but comparing it to the past, I see that there's a huge difference. And now even people view my videos much more in duration than they used to on average. Oh, so it tells good. me that People are interested and not just that they are just viewing it for just a couple of seconds, but they're actually mm. watching it on it. Yes. So YouTube Ooh. hasn't been treating me, I wouldn't say fairly, but it's good. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It is good. It is good so far. I'm, I'm actually hitting the right nose and I know the path right now. I understand how things work. So that's all. Awesome. I'm, I'm not that, I, I, I'm still <laughs> watching your video. So I mean, I'm getting my few points down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you very much. Guys, guys, make sure you go and watch his YouTube. It's amazing. Trust me. You learn to color grade. You learn to um, 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 know the right lenses to use. Yeah. He gets to advise, uh, advise you. And like, there's a lot. Go and watch. Yes. It's very cool. lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't want to take much of your time. So during your photography and your creative journey, what's some of the highlights and then the low lights that you faced? Um, the highlights can be any... Um, particular moment that really made you excited like you were so happy and and the low the highlights the low lights can be like one moment okay. that's unfortunate or whatever yeah, yeah yeah can you share um, yeah briefly with us yeah <laughs> okay i'll start with the low lights actually mm. um <laughs> the, one... way, the way you started laughing there <laughs> <laughs> this experience was the most dreadful one <laughs> it, it, I would say it was my fault in one way or the other and on the other yeah. side it wasn't because uh, it was an accident I shot this wedding, I shot two of them um, I shot one's uh, uh, traditional wedding and the other was mm. a white wedding Okay. one on Friday and the other on Saturday so I returned and I think, I, I think I even booked myself twice so I actually even had other guys working on another so when I returned, I think I was doing my service then. That was in 2018, I suppose. Yes. So I remember after bringing back all the media, I inserted it into my computer and I had access to the internet where I was working, University Social um, uh, College of Science. So I had access to internet 24 7. And I wanted to upload a video as well as download a software. I don't remember what software at that particular time it was. But I remember that. When I was trying to download the software, lots of tabs were opening automatically. I thought that it was a fault or probably my, my system was malfunctioning in one way or the other. Virus. Then it don't know me that, you know, there are a lot of things popping up. What is happening to my PC? So I was clicking them off, trying to make sure that things were moving smoothly. And I remember that before it even started, the tabs were opening automatically. I turned off my firewall because it was prompting me that whatever it is I'm trying to access is not to be trusted, so I should stop. <laughs> but I, I felt that it was a trusted site, so I I was downloading stuff. I've been downloading things from that site for quite some time, so I, I, I didn't feel very uh, perturbable anyway. So I was there, <laughs> and I noticed that things were different from my windows when I was opening the tabs. And, Almost every image or every folder icon looked one way. It's like they looked white. I thought that it was my RAM that was full because normally when your RAM is full, your PC, I use a Windows. Um, let me clear that. Yeah. I use a Windows. And so if your RAM is full, you notice that things change on your uh, 
um, your documents and how the icons appear. I thought it was one of okay. them. So I restarted my PC and it came back up as the same. Then I clicked on one file that I'm very familiar with. I always keep most of my files over there. Then in, within that particular folder, all the files were also identical in the same way. Then I checked the, um, the extension and I noticed that it had this different extension instead of the JPEG or the PNG that we are familiar with. It looked very right. different and it was records. And I noticed that, my God, ransomware, what was that? And when you click on every file, it pops up with this same document telling you that, oh, Copy your files that. are saved, yeah. but you have to pay for whatever, whatever, before you can release it to you and you have to pay it in Bitcoin, whatever. And I thought it was a joke. So I, I ran my, uh, my security system again and it, re it returned back as the same. I tried to delete the files and restore them from recycle and see whether it would work. It was always the same. Then I noticed that almost all the, um, the storage ma uh, medium that I connected to my PC all had the same issue, including the memory card, uh, sorry, including the hard drive that I up uploaded my files onto. <laughs> so I lost most of the media, the wedding pictures, some oh, videos. Damn. And all that. I lost them. And I didn't know what to do at that point. I was stunned. So luckily for me, I had my memory card with me and it had some yeah. files on them. But I had deleted those pictures. I didn't format it, thankfully. I tried to recover it. It came back with some of the files, but one whole set didn't return. And I lost one word. It, it was so dreadful. It was so dreadful. I think, it, it, I would say it's one of the reasons why I stopped shooting uh, records because the risks were too high too and maybe I wasn't prepared for all of them. Because you don't know what can happen at what particular point. Right, right. And the files are huge. You can't just upload them onto your cloud or you can't just upload them onto um, your Google Drive like that. Because even Google Drive, you want to extend the size of the storage. You, you need have to, to pay. pay for more, yeah. So it was dreadful. And even another instance was also when I got a guy to go shoot a wedding for me. He returned with this memory card that's supposed to be inserted into a phone. And you know that they come with adapters so that you can plug them into your, cam um, your computer and use it. And that was what he actually used for his camera, shooting raw files. And the files returned, most of them were messed up. Yes. They were not accessible. Of, of course. <laughs> How would you do that? And his response was, oh, I thought that it would work because when I was shooting, it was appearing until I noticed that some of the, you know, Canon will uh, let you know that. File, yeah, yeah. How does it say it? I think it said, file cannot be accessed or something like that. That's how I think Canon puts it. He saw that was happening and he didn't think that it was, it was an emergency. He had to find a way to fix it. And Can I asked him, didn't you send, my guy, how would you send yourself <laughs> to a wedding with just even one memory card? If you've noticed that this is messing up or this is what's happening, you are being, um, I mean, informed or you, you notice you've been drawn to this issue. Why don't you just fix it or insert another memory card? You went over there with right? just one memory card telling me that, you lost your main memory card. How oh. does that work? How does this happen? And <laughs> these instances all happened in weddings. You see? So I have a lot of stories yeah, to tell so about weddings and the reason why I stopped you. <laughs> so <laughs> these are huge. These are huge. And you know, when it comes mm, to mm, uh, mm. your relationship with a client, you cannot return to how, how it was. You can't revert. Bro, the wedding I mean, is no matter, it's like it's a one day thing too. One day thing, you've messed up their dream. You've messed oh. up their life. I mean, once in a lifetime event and anything that they would re remind themselves of with, you've actually lost yes. everything. You've met that. And, and so you can't forget, can forget how it was. Forget yeah. if they trust you. It's like they know, <laughs> they know it's a one time thing and they want you to be their eye, you know? So, like, <laughs> when forget the excuse. Even if it yeah, makes like, sense, you yeah. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> they just wouldn't oh. watch. They don't care. Because if it were me, I, I understand. If it were me, I'll be very furious because as a professional, I expect you to always be professional, you know? So, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of ever since I've learned my lesson, anytime I return from whatever shoot it is, especially even music videos, I <laughs> make sure that I have this backup storage medium that I'll upload everything on. And when I'm even done with the edits, I'll send it to the artist or the client to see and check out that everything is well <laughs> and done. And I'll even keep the raw files because I can always access the project ah. file. I'll keep it for <laughs> as long as a month before I'll ditch them all. Ah, one so, I mean, I learned a lot from them. <laughs>
Oh, I <laughs> see, I see, I see, I see. Yes, yeah, so guys, that's so, one uh, of the, the answer, I don't like it. Yes, guys, there's a question button then. Be using a question button to be commenting and be asking questions. Because a lot of people are joining, it's hard to scroll up to read most of the comments. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yes, no Colin. All right, so yeah, the bro. highlights. Yeah, the highlights. Okay, um, I've, I've enjoyed this, this whole, I mean, journey doing photography. And I've been introduced to a lot of people who are well-to-do, who give you some links, who um, recommend you to others and you know just like that and i've i've come to actually enjoy the attention that it also gives because i feel that i have a lot to show forth and mm -hmm. without attention mm -hmm. and without eyeballs you can't show for it so yeah. um i enjoyed working with let's say some celebrities you mentioned strongman mm -hmm. and yeah. um also working with floating stone working with mm -hmm. um um i mean a lot of clients I've even worked with and some models mm. that I never ever thought I would ever get the opportunity to work with them. Mm. These occurrences and these um, um, experiences have actually taught me a lot and I've enjoyed mm. every bit of them. If I would talk about one that really excited me most was when I got the opportunity to work with Flo Stone. So Ooh. it was through Winifred. It was through Winifred, um, the model you spoke oh, about. You yes, see, yes, that's yes, the reason yes. why it's very difficult to detach my brand from her brand. You see, <laughs> it's very difficult to detach my brand from her brand. So the, the, I mean, I used to shoot uh, music videos, but of course, you always need that one particular video or that one yeah. particular acquaintance that to get noticed or to be yes. taken seriously. Yes, yes, yes. yes, or to be to blow. I mean, that's I think the term that you normally use. Mm. So when I worked with Winifred on a couple of times. Um, she, I had no idea that she knew Tubani Music. So Tubani okay. Music was 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 her friend, and so one day Tubani recommended one particular spot that we could shoot at, and it was close to his home. So that was the first time I actually met him, and because Tubani had seen my work, I, I mean by virtue of Winifred's, I mean um, involvement in this whole thing, yeah, he showed my work once to Flokin that Flokin, we have this song that you are you know coming up with, and you know. I think this guy is actually the best fit for it. And when Flo Kien called me himself, that he wanted to meet up, I think that was one of the most exciting times in my life because I've been <laughs> shooting music videos for a long time, working with underground artists. And I still love working with them, trust me, because underground artists will give you all the flexibility to work yes. in any way that you want. Yes. Even though most yes. of the time, yes. their budget may not be as I would expect, but they will give you all the flexibility and all the liberty mm. to control things for the most part. But when I got yes. to work with Flukin, when he met up with me, we were discussing, he gave me the free will to determine everything that I wanted to do. Then he brought in more ideas. And when I finalized everything and I put everything together, and I showed it to him. His first question was, are you sure this will work? Because we were not devoting so much. We were not investing mm. much into mm. this video. That was this um, Best Rap Africa controversial rap song. It went far. And Whoa. that song itself going far and with a simple concept to join it, I really needed to maximize the little that we thought we were going to put in. So this was it. The idea was to hang some lanterns from the ceiling. And yeah. with my understanding with lighting, I know that with your camera setting, if one light appears to be stronger than others. It's either you, if you want the other lower or the less strong lights to be intensified, it's either you tune it, but if it's at this maximum and you want it to rather be the brightest, you have to adjust your camera settings or better still, settings. lower the settings of the already high light. So mm -hmm. understanding all these exposure, you know, mathematics or math, I had to find a way to make the lights from the lanterns. You know, lanterns have flicker of, or tongue of flames in them. Mm -hmm. And the flames are not as strong as the lights that we will use. And then I use yeah. my SL60W continuous light from the ceiling. So with okay. the lights hanging from above and shining on him, it's going to pick him out of the background. And if you should watch the behind the scenes, which I actually have on my YouTube channel, the background that we shot against was all um, blocks, or would I say it's an uncompleted establishment. 
So there wasn't any cloth that was black that we put there to show my background as dark as I would want it. So I just mm -hmm. use selective um, intensities and with the settings of my camera, I yeah. ensure that I could still see my subject property, properly lit as well as the lights that we had hanging from the ceiling, which are the lanterns also well exposed as well. So when I shot the first take, the second take, and I showed it to him, that was it. He was so amazed because look at this concrete walls concrete and walls and, and we have been able to results. make it look as if that we we painted the background black and it looked yes. so wonderful and i was actually i mean and i wasn't i wasn't um, in any way disturbed that he had doubts that it would work or not because i knew that i could do it because i've tried my hands on a lot of things and that's what always i tell people that before you undertake any challenge or anything that you feel that you haven't done it before, but you need to prove it to people. And it's just one time that you will have that opportunity to prove it. Use your free time to practice often. Practice. And that you was how prepared. I prepared myself. Mm. And when I got mm. that opportunity set before me, it was so easy to execute that. And it came out Whoa. great. The music did well. So did the video because people watched the video. And it was six good minutes. So imagine six good minutes handling your gimbal, shooting, <laughs> stooping down this way, my back. Trust me. I was so much <laughs> invested into this. So I did everything I could to make it work and it actually worked. And when the results came, it was deserving and it was awarded. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. And I actually got that's awarded awesome. by that video. From that video, I got I got an, an award from that. Ashanti, um, oh. Ashanti Region, best music video director, whatever. I think so. Yeah, that was, uh, I think, 2019. Yo. Oh, no, 2020 or something. All right, yeah, I think 2020. Yeah, hey, I got a one. That's it was awesome, a great man. That's also awesome, man. She's no. an A-list artist. The video coming out well and getting an award for I think it's a milestone. Ah. Trust me, bro. Yo, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I it's feel exciting. You. Nah, nah, nah. Like it's exciting, man. It's exciting. Yeah, wow. it's exciting. It's, it's a different adventure on its own. <laughs> yes. Yes. True. Wow. <laughs> Charlie. So, um, last but not the least, um. What inspires you when you are shooting? Okay. Colors. First of all, colors. Mm. Um, when it comes to photography or filmmaking, it's colors. Because mm. I know what to do with blue if I see it. I know what to yeah. do with red if I see it. And I know that red is present in the skin tone. So if the model is wearing red, I know how I'm going to selectively make them look distinct in the picture when it's done. So mm. colors first mm. is what I look at and inspires me colors secondly the mm. the zeal to do better than what i what i did yesterday or the zeal or the urge to become better always a yes. better version of myself from yesterday that's also what inspires me and of course the youtube channels that i watch as well as i mean the people that i join hands with to learn a couple of things from so yeah wow <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome do you have any advice for the juvenile photographers and filmmakers that are looking up to you and um, also trying so hard to uh, make it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a plethora of videos on my channel talking about this same subject. A lot of videos. I always advise. I think my, my channel is heavily motivated by youngsters or startup photographers. Because every mm -hmm. content I, I make sure I break it down to the I mean, the minimalistic way I can put it as possible yeah. so that anyone yeah. who joins my channel for the first time will have a, something to deduce from what I just put up there. So my mm -hmm. advice I always give them, or I'll give youngsters, people who are trying to get their foot at the door, is that they should always see themselves capable of what they say they've picked up to do. If it's photography, feel in yourself that you can do it, first of all. And secondly, you need to have passion for it. If you're driven by the returns or the income that you can get from photography as a practice, then I don't think yeah. that's the right thing you have to do. That's, that, that's actually not a venture for you. You'll be wasting your time. Mm. From the onset, a couple of years, I mean, everyone's different. We are, our destinies are different. Someone can start photography and do well in the first few months and get, I mean, revenue more than someone who started, let's say, two years ago and they are still struggling. Two years ago, yes, 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 yes. So yes. we are all different. But it all comes down to passion. If you have passion, you can move. And that passion is going to push you to even learn more than what you know today. Because things are changing and things are getting better and better. 
Now we are having softwares that can easily edit a picture. We are having softwares that can easily smoothen our skin. We are having, it looks like AI is dominating now. And if you are not careful, we are going to be stuck in the same trenches where we started and we will not be seeing ourselves grow. Exactly. Out of exactly. whatever we are. Exactly. So we exactly. should always project doing something different from what we are doing and being the best versions of ourselves every day. Mm. So to mm. youngsters, mm. guys, you always have to learn ahead. YouTube is there. It has a chunk of information. Whoa. Sometimes I even, I, I even feel that attending the film school and spending so much money in a film school, enrolling in a film school, well, I mean, it can be argued, but in my opinion, it's not really necessary. You would that rather, I would rather advise you to invest that money into gear acquisition as well as um, bundle, I mean, internet access and learn yeah. on YouTube. Because everything is there. Yeah, almost almost everything content. is there. Everything. Is everything. There. everything. Exactly. Every, not even almost. Everything. Exactly. Literally everything. everything. You just have to know how yes. to look for yes. it. You just have to know how mm. to look. Because people don't Bro, know how to... Bro, if you like it, I don't type it well. You will get it. <laughs> you get the point. You get the point. So it's like that. Uh, and YouTube also monitors your search history and it's always in the know of what you're interested in. So if you keep on mm, searching mm. for content, it will always keep recommending the right videos for you. And of course, check my YouTube channel out. If you want to start working of course. as a photographer, you want to start shooting pictures, start, I mean, adventure in filmmaking. I mean, my YouTube channel is there. It's for youngsters. That's and awesome. That's awesome. Start into, yes, into yes. Our, like me, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, don't One maybe I'll see you. One maybe I'll see you. No, like, I'm actually serious. So do you know in Japan, um, one thing I realized that like, so I need to learn how to make um, short films and like of all my travels because I'm planning to like roam a lot of the Japan and other places. But Sally, the videos, how to take content, it was it was like one big issue for me. I'm I'm really? actually learning every day on YouTube and not just to improve myself. That was good. So, what do you use? Uh, yeah, I use um um Canon R. He was R. Yes. You should four K thirty frames per second, ten eighty D at sixty frames per second. You have a good camera. You actually have a good camera. I mean you actually have a good camera. <laughs> and <laughs> and I think I can actually shoot a it shoots log profile. It has a um, C log, right? It has C log. Yes, you have C log. Yeah. 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 I mean, you have a very good camera. I mean, and, and if you watch more videos on that, you you are, you are, you are better off. Because I'm where, good guy. where you are gonna be in Japan, your scenery, everything is something I would love to actually experience one time in my life. And I'll get the opportunity Bro, to come, film. I'll be waiting for you. Come, scenes. come, come, come. I'll come through. You're working on that. You're working on that. Because you have, yeah. you, you, you're going to have all the scenery. And yes, I, I think yes, that's yes. one thing that Ghanaians um, <laughs> always find difficult to believe. When they see pictures on Pinterest or they see pictures on Google and they compare it to a Ghanaian photographer in quotes, saying that I created these. I think it was in your situation as well. Where you put yes, it yes. people were... Uh, Really, people are in doubt that nah. Yes, like yeah, I yeah, a picture yeah, from you cannot share this picture. No, yes. no, you right. <laughs> it's because Ghanaians have this notion that we are here, and so we are here. And if that's what I see on a regular, someone is trying to do something different. It's not that. Mm. Even mm. up to now, I'll create yes, up to now. Put it out there on my page, and someone will come and ask me, "Are you sure you did this? Really?" So to debunk all that controversy and those ambiguity and the doubts, I put out something that will show behind the scenes of how I did this, how yes, I did that. Yes, to yes, make you, yes. I mean, to just make a point to, to convince you that we are also capable of doing this. As well. Exactly, exactly. Wow, that's Kobe Shots, man. I hope you guys enjoyed today's session, live session with Kobe Shots. It was recently I found that you were doing a chat um, create, uh, with creatives and I had no idea. I was like, yo, this guy, we have to interview him. If every day is just when are you creative, <laughs> I'll be leaving 29th of April. So never, oh, then I'll come through to a car and I'll have you on my on my channel. I'll have you. We are gonna awesome. do photography, awesome. we we'll do filmmaking and we'll shoot the crazy chat as well. That would be wonderful. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I'll come through go. and do that. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. That's coming short, man. Um, we'll be having some Q five minutes for like some any minutes. If you have any question, put it in there. Let's um, let's let's drain this man. Let's drain this man. This guy's a genius, so you guys. Hmm. I'll do my best. The day he will be, <laughs> he'll be there. You see, you guys are not draining him. 
Yeah, so um, uh, music videos as well. What's what's your um um your drive whenever you're taking those kind of? Is it also the colors? What inspires you when you're taking most of those shots? Okay, I've invested so much in my equipment, video mm. like uh, in video wise. I don't spend so much money on getting gear for my photography as much. I still use my Canon EOS 6D. I'm coming up with a video now. In, I mean tomorrow about why I still use my EOS 6D. Most of the pictures you see, if it's not um, a chance to use the 5D Mark IV that belongs to a friend, maybe uh, a collaborative shoot that I'll get a chance to use it. I will always use my 6D to shoot. But oh wow, look at it this way. If you've been investing so much money in gear and you're still creating the very same quality as you used to when you had a lower end gear, then you're not, mm. you're not doing any better because, yeah. I mean, so th this is one, one way or the other, a way that motivates me that I've bought this. Now I have to push out. So I get inspired to create something that will make someone see it and say, oh, I'm also growing or I'm also developing my skill set and not just my arsenal of equipment. So my gear, the gear I've acquired pushes me a lot, as well as even the people that I get to work with. Because every instance, every project poses a new challenge, a new mm. challenge or a new platform for me to be a greater version of of myself, if I should put great, it that way. Great. So yes, yes, a lot yes, of instances yes. pushes me, but particularly how much investment I've made in the gear I have should reflect in the videos that I put out there. Of yes. course. Of course. <laughs> uh, I've been watching his videos. I always feel inspired. Thank you, guys. I big up, Kobe Shorts. Big up. Oh, big I appreciate big it. Big up, big up. <laughs> I love you, Kobe Shorts. Hey. Please, hey, we love you. Love, we love you. We love you. We love you, Kobe Shorts. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, I saw I saw uh, on your page that you were you did some photo shoots once. When when um, photo work? Sorry. When are you planning to do another one again? Oh, hmm. that's what the work is you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very soon, very soon. But every time I plan, I you know you know over here in Kumase, mm. sometimes it's very difficult to get the patronage I expect. It's not that I'm looking okay. forward to meeting so many people, but mm. I always want to put a schedule ahead that will be enough to attract not just a few people, but a lot of people. Mm. But anytime I put a schedule ahead, I'm skeptical about my movement. Because you know okay. our craft, if you don't sacrifice something totally, let's say there's this big gear coming in and you've already scheduled a photo walk. Looking at these two, I'm mostly skeptical about how I put Obviously. them. Obviously. Obviously. Because yeah. I may not be out for it because probably there's something that will be much more, uh, mm. how do I put it, much more deserving of my attention. Let me put it that way. Mm. But with photo walks, I started doing that, I think, two years ago. And mm. I have that zeal to bring it back again. So very soon, I'm looking at God willing, next month, I'll put one out. But I have this film coming up, which is also taking most of my time because I need to be meeting up with the actors, meeting up with the script writers, and, you know, assembling my crew, seeing the gear that we have, the location. So a lot of things are taking my time. That's the reason why I'm unable to oh. Oh. schedule the next photo walk. But it's definitely going to be in We time. are waiting. We are waiting. Don't worry. <laughs> we know both. We are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, from Praise Gallery, uh, I I would really like to use this platform to thank Kobe Shorts. He has been amazing since I first met him on campus, down to earth, and always ready to help. It is so, it is so, it is so. It is thank so. you very much, Kobe Shorts. Yeah, uh, I know this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know him. Coffee, coffee also say, um, Kobe Shorts, I love you. I, I love every content you put up on your page. Bless up. Hey. Thank you very much. Can I get a thank one, so one so session much. with you too? To better my wedding video work, just DM him and watch almost all his oh, YouTube course, videos. You are good to go. You are good to go. Yeah. The lighting guru Kobe, big ups, man, big ups. Uh, oh, lighting guru. Yeah, I'm, I'm very bad. I'm, I'm, I'm very bad. <laughs> 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 From fellow shots, um, since proud of you, man, proud of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fellow shots. He's actually <laughs> a good friend of mine. I schooled with him. Uh, messages, yes. <laughs> I see you, bro. Okay. We have um, the transition to videos. How did that come about and how challenging was it? I think Ebo came in late, but you can give us some few, like one light to, for Ebo to catch up. 
Um, come come back again. I didn't really get you. So you are into the video. What was the challenge? Okay. 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 Um, the challenge was that uh, I think I was way more than informed. I think I will put it that way. I was way more than informed. So starting it for real to get people to actually see. I I actually started a long time ago before people realized I was actually doing video. Oh, but for real. In one yes, because in one way or the other, I was ashamed of the camera I was using. In comparison <laughs> to the video content I was watching, the cameras these guys were using, I felt that because I've watched these contents, I know how I'll go about. So if I had a red or if I had a black magic or a Lumix, mm, any mm, camera that shoots for that's meant video for the most part, because I didn't have that, I wasn't coming out more. So it was a challenge for me to bring oh. myself out. And even when I when I created videos. Um, Canon US 6D, you know very well that doesn't shoot flat profile. So I yeah, was scared of flat profile from the onset. Even most of the videos I started shooting, even with my Lumix, I wasn't shooting flat profile. I was always shooting with either, what, what was it called? Was it, it called, they call it Cine Like D or something. It's a little bit like a flat profile, but it has a bit more vibrance and contrast. Okay, so okay, I was, okay. First of all, it, it was daunting. I was quite frightened about trying my hands on a, a flat profile because it looked it looked flat. It looked like it has no color. So the first instinct that will come in mind because it's very different from photography. You know, photography you take pictures, you don't take them in flat profile. You take them with yeah. vibrance and a color and all that. Exactly. But exactly. here it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different dimension where the colors are not there. You have to put them in there, mm. and it was all challenging. So. <laughs> the transition was very, very much distinct. It was huge. Crossing over and trying something that you didn't have the right equipment because you were more mm. informed in terms of theoretically, but when it comes to practicals, you don't have the right gear yes, to yes, you know, complement yes. what you can do. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Interesting. Um, quick shots. Bless up for your time, Kobe Shots. Oh, awesome. Uh, the Niagere. Ni, 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 I'm so sorry it's if, near, I, if I mess you. It's near Ray. It's near you, Ray. <laughs> He's actually <laughs> one of the guys who always motivates me a lot. I did a video. One, uh, I think what video was that? The behind the scenes of uh, Beast Shoot I did. Um, he came around to help me out. I came to Accra mm -hmm. just for a day. And he was more than willing to help me. He's a YouTuber as well. And oh. he's been an inspiration, trust me. That's great. That's he pushes great. me a lot. Great. Please me Kobe and I'm not even surprised he's actually again. here. I'm really thankful, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I still have the love again stage play. Play the video. I, I don't really get it. Uh, like Kobe, what 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 you got for us, KSC photographers? Oh, I love to just reach out to him. Sure, this guy. If I was in, Kuma, I, I get what Praise Gallery was saying. I still love the. Oh. oh, okay. Love again was a stage play. I filmed oh. the video. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I filmed the video. Then I, I think I had my Nikon D5100. That was what I started out in photography with. Okay. <laughs> Nikon, yes. And then I filmed the video. We have another question in. In terms of collaboration um, as a filmmaker, what's your take on the best advice? On what best advice you would give in terms of collaborating with other creatives? Okay, the best advice I'll give when you're collaborating with people is that you have to actually know who you're going to be working with. You don't mm -hmm. just look at the person's work and be enthused about it and be motivated to go work with the person without actually doing a background check and knowing that there's someone that you are actually for real supposed to work hand in hand with. Knowing the mm -hmm. person very well comes in a lot of ways. First of all, you can first of all speak with the person and understand how much invested the person is as much as you are. Because yeah. I've noticed yeah. working with or collaborating with other creatives and found out that mostly I am more devoted than they are. And if it happens that way, you don't get that kind of that, result yeah, that you yeah. may expect. Because we Absolutely. all have our lives, all have our challenges. So you don't just work with people because you see that their works are good and all that. And I've noticed also that people collaborate with others because they also want to get attention in that regard. So yes. let's say this person has a lot of followership, whatever. If I join hands with this person, there's someone um, that I can, I would love to liaise with. And it also works on the flip side. 
yeah. people trying to reach out to you also to collaborate with you, you have to also be very careful because not everyone has good intentions about wanting to join you. Someone may be wanting to come, you know, work with you and, you know, steal a couple of things or... Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it also comes yeah. down to the people who always want to be... Um, um, how do I put it? Apprentices or assistants. Everyone has an intention when they are collaborating with people. So we have to be careful with the people that we work with, first of all. And if you are collaborating with someone, make sure that you properly... Um, put up a good work or a good relationship with a person on set, first of all, because it also lead on to the successes in the future. Because if you work with someone for the first time and things don't turn out right, make sure that you, the one confronting that person, gives up, I mean, gives up all the maximum respect that you can ever mm -hmm. give to mm -hmm. this person you're working with. Because you don't mm -hmm. know where you're going to meet this person. And also be welcoming to any um, external um, inputs from people perhaps those who would want to collaborate with you, open arms and be always open for other views from other people because collaboration comes wow. in a lot of ways, not just the work that's being executed, but the process itself is much more mm. equally mm. important as well. Wow. <laughs> Charlie, thank you so much for today. You are so sorry. I really appreciate it. So much of your time. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I, I actually prefer this. Huh? So, yes. I didn't go yes. nowhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. I hope there's going to be a part two very soon where we get to actually like have a lot of adventure with you one day. That would be wonderful. And also meeting <laughs> up physically to create content. I'm looking forward to, I mean, Charlie, my, mind day, my, my, my mind day, my mind day, my mind day, my mind day. I'm planning. I mean, April is a long way away, of... so I'll be there. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We definitely need. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, bro. All right, bro. Thanks for joining today. Thanks so much for your time. Bless, like your your humility was all over the place. I feel you, bro. Bless up, kid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great. <laughs> great. great. <laughs>